Hello everyone, welcome back to Concept Bio. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the dihedral angle, the angles, and Ramachandran plot, and how you can uh, the concepts behind it. So now let's uh, get into it. So now uh, we all know what a peptide bond is. A peptide bond is suppose we have one amino acid, C alpha C O H as a terminal group, and there's another amino acid over here. Now, when how the peptide bond formation occurs is this COOH terminal and this NH3 terminal will both it will undergo a condensation a condensation reaction where a minus uh, where a hydrogen uh, a water molecule is removed out, forming this kind of structure where an actual amide bond is formed and which this bonding is called as a peptide bond. Now, what is special about this peptide bond? It this is your C alpha. And this is your on the C alpha. This is your R1, R2 group, R2, R1. So you see how it has uh, formed. We just remove a water molecule and a peptide bond is formed. Now something important you have to know is nitrogen has a lone pair. This lone pair uh, uh, participates in resonance structure. And what happens is this uh, uh, double there actually forms a bond resonance bonding over here where we get a partial double bond that occurs over here. In, it actually occurs and we call it partial double bond because it's only, uh, it's a very small percent the resonance that occurs but it is uh, valid enough that it uh, shows some significance when you look at the structure. So what happens here is this uh, double bond occurs between the C, uh, carboxyl terminal C and the uh, amine terminal from the other amino acid. A small double bond occurs. This uh, oh, oh, will get up to slight positive uh, minus term and slight positive term. All right, this will obvi this will always happen. So now, what is important about this? So when you have a peptide uh, poly uh, a peptide structure like this, this bonding between here cannot bend because we know a double bond is where is uh, quite strong in nature and cannot bend on its own. So this bonding over here is also called as a omega angle second form. So over here, the omega angles cannot form much. It can only go from 180 degree to 0 degree. It can't get any values in between that. So if the omega angle is at 180 degree, we call it as a trans structure because it will look something similar to uh, C. It will go to N. And uh, one second, it will go to C, N. Oh, sorry, what I, I drew it wrong. That's why I got confused. Uh, if this is N over here, this is the C alpha of this terminal. And this is the C alpha C of the carbon bond and the other C alpha group. H will come here and R group will come over here. So this R group will come over here. This is the trans structure. If you're looking at the cis structure, cis structure will look C. The N group will still be here, but the C alpha comes bottom and the H goes up and C alpha comes here. So this is this double bond occurs over here. Double bond over. So this structure is a cis structure and this structure is a trans structure. Now, predominantly in structures, the trans structure is what always occurs. Alright, so now we got this. Now we know the cis and trans structure can only exist between 0 degrees and 180, meaning it can be uh, 180 degrees apart, meaning the hydrogen and oxygen are 180 degrees apart or the hydrogen and oxy oxygen will be 0 degrees apart from each other. Alright, now next. Another two important uh, bond angles that occur are between are between this C alpha and the C carbon and this C alpha and the C nitrogen. All right. So what is that? Carbon and the carbon carbon bonding, which can rotate is known as your psi angle. And your carbon nitrogen bonding, which occur can rotate. And that angle formed is known as a phi angle. So what does that mean? Angle psi and phi. If you're looking at C alpha C and C over here which I already told is partial thing which is your omega bonding and over here okay this can rotate at particular angles known as your psi angle and this can rotate at particular angles known as your phi angle all right uh, this is just and again if you look at this this is again c alpha c this continues for your next peptide and again this is back to your psi angle for the next peptide bond all right so we can look at this now what is important about this so if you look at a plane structure, if this is a plane, this psi, uh, C alpha C bonding can go out of plane or in plane from, uh, it can vary from 0 to 180 degree. It's actually minus 180 to 180, but this is what happens for both of them. These both can go in plane and out of plane like this. I'll explain it in just one second. So now let's uh, see what happens is uh, for psi angles. If this 
when it's in this kind of uh, configuration this is known as your uh, uh, when your angle is zero degrees all right and when your r group comes to the other end this is known as 180 degree or minus 180 degree when this kind of structure occurs the c bonding over here from r it flips here this becomes your 180 or minus 180 both are similar 180 is when you go clockwise when it flips over here minus 180 is when it goes counterclockwise and comes over here both 180s are same and for phi what happens is uh, over here the r group will this will be near zero degree because the hydrogens are together over here and if it's minus 180 180 minus 180 to 180 now i'll just give you a simple explanation i made a small model i hope it makes sense now if you look at the structure uh, model structure over here this carbon nitrogen this is a partial double bond it can never bend that's why i took it at the center part over here this bonding can never go out of plane all right now look this is your c alpha c c alpha c is nothing but your omega bonding over here now i told you omega bonding can go from zero degree to minus 180 to 180 degree so this is your r1 this is currently your uh, your uh, this is currently your zero degree position so if i'm moving to 180 degree this will suddenly start rotating out of plane clockwise and it will go this is 90 degrees so if you look from straight up this is 90 degrees all right so 90 degree this is 90 degree and if you continue going down and it flips over here this is 180 degree back to zero degree if i slowly go so understand what's happening this is slowly going out of plane out of plane this is 90 degree out of plane out of plane out of plane back to minus uh, 180 degree if i'd gone the reverse way zero degree going back going back going back going back okay minus 90 degree going back going back, going back minus 180 so you can understand why minus 180 and positive 180 are same this is what happens so this will rotate like this out of plane and in plane same thing happens for this side also between your c alpha and n which is your phi bonding so over here we have n over here this this is currently in your zero degree position it will slowly go out of plane out of plane out of plane positive that is 90 degree 180 degree so back to zero degree it will go the other way counterclockwise direction minus 180 uh, minus 90 degree and 180 degree so this is the kind of bonding that can occur between the amino uh, the groups so now this won't occur uh, individually it will occur together so suppose this will go to a different area and this will go to a different area so you can understand what actually happens from the thing so now one great thing uh, uh the suppo great scientist known as ramsabri i think he became the director of iisc later on uh, so what he found out is if these amino acids twist like this obviously these amino acids are uh, these amino these groups are actually atoms no so these atoms will they won't be just one particle they'll be a particle with an electron cloud around them these are just uh, representation but you have to understand this r group will be an electron cloud huge chains they'll be having huge electron structures like this so what happens if i bring this r group and oxygen together oxygen is a huge molecule R group is a huge molecule. Both will uh, repel each other and they'll like, I don't want you, I don't want you, and they'll flip away. This is a steric hindrance property. So steric hindrance means this angle will can never actually occur in real life. And what will happen, it will usually be separated out away from this bonding such that they don't interact. The electron clouds don't touch each other and steric hindrance or steric interactions don't occur. So same thing happens with the nitrogen group and uh, hydrogen groups over here, the R group and all. So that's the reason uh, Ramachandran did some great research work and he found out he made a plot. What plot he did was he made this plus 180 to minus 180 degree. He did a phi versus psi, psi versus phi angle. Psi is your C alpha C, phi is your uh, C alpha, uh, NC alpha bonding. So what he noticed was when you vary these groups, the only interactions that are feasible are if you look he again then made this into a quadrant four quadrants the upper left quadrant is known as a beta pleated sheet region it will be something around like uh, this this is a beta pleated sheet meaning beta sheet meaning what does this mean it means if your phi angle your phi angle is less than zero to uh, it's in the range of around i think this is around oh uh, one second i'll just uh, cross it yeah, it's around the range of i think um, i just cross checked it's coming around minus uh, one it's coming around minus 160 or something from minus 60 to 180 we, uh, if you have a range and a psi angle of uh, above 60 to 180 you'll have a beta pleat region what does that mean if my if my phi psi angle is in the range of 60 60 would be something if 60 would be something like this 
and phi angle is something minus 60 meaning it has to be something around like this from this kind of structure a beta pleat structure occurs if the amino acids are made in this kind of arrangement then he noticed if my arrangement falls below if my psi angle falls below uh, zero and it's still in the left quadrant we'll get a region known as your uh, alpha helix region now this is right handed right handed alpha helix region all right so what does that mean uh, from zero to minus 180 some region over here and zero to minus 80 some uh, region over here if both are flipped like this you'll get an alpha helix structure over here all right and if he comes above if the phi angle is above 0 to 180 and both are positive then we get a small very small region where this is known as your left left handed alpha helix all right so this small region is your left handed alpha helix and this final region is known as your disallowed region disallowed Meaning any bonding that occurs here will not happen. And another quite interesting note you can make is 0 and 0. If you look at 0 and 0, if I make both 0 and 0, the steric hindrance is so high that nothing actually happens here. No amino acid can form any protein structure, secondary structure by having this kind of 0, 0 degree uh, thing. They always will be out of plane with each other such that steric hindrance is completely removed. And they're in the most favorable spot. Alright, so this is a simple understanding on how to do it. You don't have to go about buying a, a complex uh, chemi uh, chemistry set to learn it. You can do it with a simple pen and paper like this and try it out yourself. So you have your beta pleated sheet, uh, uh, left-handed helix, right-handed helix and disallowed region. Now, there are uh, two important aspects to know, glycine and proline. These two say, uh, no, I'm built different. I don't uh, participate in this kind of uh, Ramsudan plots. Why glycine has to, the R group is nothing but a hydrogen group. Hydrogen is very small, so it doesn't have much steric hindrance. And you can actually find if I uh, make glycine as orange color, glycine will actually find, you'll find plots of glycine everywhere. It will come in the disallowed region, it will come in the left hand region, it doesn't matter, it will come anywhere, it doesn't care. Proline on the other hand is very strict. Why? Because this alpha, if proline is on this side. This alpha helix, the proline structure, nitrogen, uh, the group attaches back to the alpha amino group. If you remember the structure of uh, uh, of uh, of uh, what proline, it's N, 1, 2, 3, 4. And this is the structure, if this is C alpha and C O O minus, this is the structure of proline, correct? So this, so this can't even move at all. So it is hindered in such a way that this rotation is very limited. It can't go 180, minus 180 and all. It doesn't have in its uh, lifetime. So it will be very restricted to very small movements. Why? Because these two are bonded to each other. So this is the reason. Proline also has a very irregular structure. And if I'm not wrong, it will be straight lines over here. But all the other amino acid follows this. And remember, this is the Ramchandran plot for L amino acids. So I hope you're able to understand what a Ramchandran plot uh, actually means and the dihedral angles that occur. I hope it has been helpful. You can ask any questions down below. This has been Concept Bio. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching. Bye.